This is Terrell Daring, and I wanted to show y'all a tour of my, my dad's shop. Uh, he only lives about 40 minutes away from me, but I'm afraid of messing up his shop, uh, getting it dirty. So that's why I don't frequent here very often as far as the tools. Uh, his pride and joy would be the shopsmith, and he does not want to be on camera, but he will talk to us. So, Dad, let's have a tour here. Well, I just wanted to say about the shopsmith, that's uh, kind of where I got my woodworking hobby started. I bought it in Fayetteville, North Carolina in the 70s and put it in a spare bedroom in an apartment that we were living in <laughs> at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. That is a Mark V, correct? Yes. I thought I'd be retiring from Fort Bragg, but they slapped another strike on me and <laughs> Right behind that came orders for Berlin, that three-year tour. And my dad is a uh, career military, special forces army. Who? I uh, then had to serve an extra year back at Fort Hood before I could retire. But anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I took this shopsmith back to Austin and gave it to my brother-in-law to use for the three years I was in Berlin. And he used it and uh, was quite happy with it. Those things are quite old. But believe it or not, I have never even changed the V belt on this shopsmith. It's the original, and I can crank it up right now, and it runs like a top. That's one thing I learned from my dad is he babies his tools. I mean, I don't necessarily practice it, but he babies his tools. Well, I don't it's like not to a bad thing. As babies, Taking care of them. Just, I like to take care of them. I figure they'll take care of me when I need them. Absolutely. And what would you like to show people, folks next? I give up. What do you want? Okay, now, I, I want to explain I, this. I, I guess what I need to do here is explain that this is no longer an a woodworking shop. Uh, I found out a few years ago that I, I have emphysema and so sawdust is not on the menu for folks with emphysema. And that so does suck. I, uh, I, I designed the shop 25 by 25. I thought, man, I finally got the shop everybody dreams about. Yeah. And then I find out I've got this stuff. So I... Uh, I've had to accept the fact that I can no longer play in in wood and sawdust. So I, I, I tried to think of what I could do uh, out here instead of that. So I went back to uh, doing uh, models of airplanes oh. like I did back when I was a kid. Yes, he does a lot of models. And it, he also likes to do models of stuff he has jumped out of. He was a paratrooper, uh, he was airborne in, in Special Forces. Well, so he has a model of everything he's jumped out of. Uh, no, no I don't. Not everything? No. And that's a World War II bomb oh. you're looking at there. Okay. That's a World War II people. Okay, then I, I know a lot of what he did was was uh, things he jumped out of. I believe he got that picture back there in Okinawa, didn't he, Dad? Yeah, I got that in Okinawa. That's made out of I a shell. I Chinook there in uh, of course, the Huey back gunner. But anyway, to me, that's a sorry excuse for uh, our, our replacement for a woodworking shop. Yeah. But that's the best I could do at the time. They talked me into an iPad, and I've, I've uh, slowly come into the 21st century, <laughs> kicking and screaming. And yeah, there was a time my dad wouldn't even turn on a computer because he didn't know anything about it. This is this little thing you're looking at. They got, I believe, the day they were married or not long yeah, after. My mother did that when we got married. Yeah. I've been married, what, 47, 8 years? 50 years come June. In June 6th, it will be 50 years. Uh, okay, so let's... So anyway, uh, I did the models for a while and uh, then I got the iPad, so that... I spend a little time on that out here on the weekends, but uh, it's it's pretty much turning into a man cave on the weekends. We play uh, 
poker and scrabble and risk and monopoly and yahtzee and so forth the only one i like is scrabble we play it at this table this is the table this is the seat where my father sits nobody else sits here he's like archie bunker uh if you don't mind that i'm going to jump right into the actually i wanted to explain the the uh, no we'll do that the, yeah okay okay we'll do that in a minute we're going to start let's just start on this end okay this, this is <laughs> This is 99%, if not all, Shopsmith accessory. Yeah, it's accessory for the Shopsmith. Do you mind uh, verbally saying left to right since you don't want to be on camera? Well, it's it's, it's pretty obvious what it is. Well, yeah, I'm for those soft, that don't know. Belt sander and joiner and miter and... and uh, that, that would be a... Uh, jigsaw. Jigsaw. But... Uh, a lot of guards and brushes and fences. I, I pretty much bought all that. But I do have a lot of things on here from from uh, my dad, my granddad, my uncle, as you'll see on other walls here. Yeah, I've tried to talk my dad at, into letting me bring this to my shop, but it's not happening. But he that said, my dad's. "Yeah, he said this will take up to a half inch blade, mm -hmm. and that's what I would use it for mostly is for resawing boards into thinner boards." Forgive my shakiness. I don't, I'm not on a tripod. Please excuse, it's upside down, it's tracked out. I tried to convince him of this. <laughs> anyway. I told him I've seen worse shop tours, is why I wanted to go ahead and do this. A couple of dog beds out here, they come out here with me on the weekend. Yeah, he's got two beagles that, that, that hang out here. They sleep there and there, and one of them snores. Okay, now is there anything you want to explain about the stuff on this pegboard? Well, some of it explains itself, but some of it doesn't. That's that's pretty much uh, what my dad, granddad had. That's the world's largest C clamp, I do believe. Where? Over here. Uh, this thing right here. C clamp. Oh, that. Yeah, that's that's a pretty dang big C clamp. He's he's talking about that right there, folks. Sorry. I don't know why I pointed at that because I didn't see that. This is a shelf that's going to go along here and that's hold uh, on sea clamps and all. Now, some people uh, these days are using a French cleat system. I'm sure you're familiar with the term. Not, not totally, no. I'll explain it after we're done on the camera, but there's a debate whether or not you should use French cleat or... Uh, well, I wouldn't call it a debate, it's a discussion between the benefits of pegboard and French cleat. French cleat holds a lot of weight, but he also has these reinforced behind him. A uh, lot of hand saws, you don't see those very very often anymore. This is second and third generation tools in, in some cases. And this this was, uh, where? what store did you get that from or what I, catalog? I don't remember now. Is there? Uh, I ahead. think it was under two hundred dollars, but it's a solid out. fine workbench. And what's the story on that gun back there? I don't remember it. Uh, that, that was given to me. It's a Belgium pistol. Non, it, it it's broken. It doesn't fire anymore. But uh, I think it, it was about two hundred and fifty dollars listed. Nothing fancy about it, kind of a cheap made pistol, but... Do we still want to skip over this for now? Yeah, let's go over here. Okay, I want you to tell people the story about this lantern here. Well, my granddad worked on the railroad way back when, and that's where I got that from. And of course, there's a story about the red light uh, of, a, of a lantern. <laughs> yeah. That's another story. <laughs> uh, I've got a little... little uh, Wash stand over here comes in handy, and that's a picture of uh, the Republic of Texas. Hoorah! At one time, it took in parts of five states, and uh, kind of proud of that map. It's, it's the original. I like the frame too. Copy of the original. That's the world's largest screwdriver yeah that 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 there folks is a monster screwdriver <laughs> it's a two-hander job <laughs> now those are those there uh for those that don't know are spoke shapes correct right or yes okay i, I, I didn't hear 
uh, all kinds of uh, blades there and what you call them templates and uh, g uh, gauges that's an old what kind of trap is that they're just small uh, small game traps yeah. at the hay hook and I'm not tr real sure what this looks like some kind of fence but I don't want to assume anything because I don't uh, it's, a, it's a bevel a bevel it, it comes out and gives you a certain angle oh that's cool I did not know that now these I'm familiar with because I have a couple of them, a roller stand. Yeah, those come in real handy. Well, that is a big old massive, what we call it. Now this, I've been begging my dad for these. I love these. That's the real thing, it's not a fake. <laughs> yeah, that, those are real. Real horns, not fake. By God, that day like I'm big in Texas. Yeah. This is my, this is uh, my, my dad's scroll saw. So yes, he does have a scroll saw. I did not pick up the habit from my dad. I'm not, I'm not even really sure I remember how. And this is a variable speed, is it not? This is, I believe this is a variable speed. I did not know it was. And this says, uh, I believe this takes flat and pin end. Yeah, it looks, looks to take uh, flat blades. And we have a chop saw over here. Or compound miter saw, whatever you want to call it. This is a Makita? Yeah. A Makita? And it's bolted to the... My dad made these workbenches. It's a bunch of uh, two-by-fours for the tabletop with a... Uh, they're spruce. They're spruce. Oh. Every one of those, they're all on edge. Yeah, uh, these are all hand-picked spruce, two-by-fours. And uh, I don't remember where he got the plans, or did you invent them? I, I designed it. He designed it. There's not a nail in the whole thing. Yeah, it's all bolt carriage bolted together, and it's very, very. I, I can take take it all apart and replace any bad part. Yeah, like when when a uh, human greases human, uh, you know, natural greases and your skin will eventually discolor that. So that's one thing. And these are all countersunk, so they don't. And this is a uh, masonite. And you. Now, if it's ruined, you take it off. Yep, and uh, pretty much anything that can be bolted down is, except for the scroll saw. This is a belt sander. I've broken a few belts on this, and my dad was thinking, "Son, can you not take care of anything?" But we realized how old the belts were that we were using. Glue came loose. Yeah, the glue came loose on the sanding belts. But this is a, and this is not a, a disc and belt. It's just strictly belt, correct? Yep. It looks like it's belt driven. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. How old is this thing? That was my dad's. Cool. This is one of the most important pieces of equipment in the shop. Oh yeah, the this, shop. this is the most important thing in the shop. For anybody that wants to send my father a gift, I didn't. And There we go. That's what he named one of his dogs after, Bud. Well, this is Tic-Tac-Toe. They guard my beer. This is the... The, <laughs> the beer... The beer guards. <laughs> now what, goes, what goes hand in hand with the refrigerator is this little area over here. Yeah, some of y'all get a hoot out of this, but there is a history behind this. Uh, this, folks. <laughs> you want to tell the story before we open the curtain? Well, <laughs> back when I first came to the Army, uh, there, there weren't uh, women going out to the rifle ranges. It was just guys. So... You had uh, foxhole positions and so forth, and back behind those foxholes, you had uh, tubes stuck in the ground at an angle by the the engineers put them in the ground. Yeah. And uh, it was for the, the, the purpose of uh, taking a leak. <laughs> Whenever you felt the urge, you could just go and, and relieve yourself and uh, with that in mind this folks is what inspired this it's an army green we call it lovingly the piss tube but it, it is it doesn't just stop at the ground it's routed routed it's out through the, the foundation yeah. down piped under the road and down the hill through pipe yeah and uh, <laughs> it's gravity fed obviously and uh, it's just to catch me out because, <laughs> because you don't uh, have to leave the shop. I, that's right. And in all kinds of weather, I'm good. 
and every beer, beer I I visit this. Yeah, this is a pee only tube for pooping. You're pretty much stuck, and you got to. If not, then maybe that's what's in that can. I don't know. I'm just kidding, Dad. So I think I think probably this is the second most important piece <laughs> of equipment in the shop. That would be the reason uh, for the curtains in here, but that's so. And my dad's not too proud. It's just you just see every now and then you'll see feet sticking out from under the curtain. Where? <laughs> This is not a very in-depth tour. I love the amount of lights he has in this thing, and I'm jealous. You said this is 20 by 25? 25 by 25. 25 by 25. And I believe he that is a deer he killed. He's killed a few in his time. Yeah, well, there, there's, there's three points broken off that, that set of horn. Yeah, these this are probably- at least an 11 point. These are for future knife handles and or decoration. Oh, this is a sign I made for my dad long ago. Or did my did you make this? I don't remember. I think you did. That was a long time ago I made that man cave. But uh There's a sign up over the door. Oh, outside. Outside. Okay. Yeah, he's got a face shield. He can't have too much protection. He's got ear plugs, I believe. Yeah. Or not ear plugs, ear ear protection over here in this general vicinity. He's got masks, he's got one there, and because of his breathing difficulty, when he, even when he mows the yard, he has to use those respirator thingies. And uh, I, I, I figured you woodworking friends of mine would appreciate this, and I hope it hasn't been long and drawn out for you, but it, it's, you know, this is where my roots are. I haven't spent a whole lot of time on some of these tools because I have to clean up afterwards. <laughs> And uh, as this little shelving system, uh, earlier in the video I showed you the storage rack in the middle room there. And this is the thing we all need to beg my dad to let me bring home with me. Well, right now, Charlie is supposed to inherit my tools. That's the only reason I haven't sold them. But if, if he makes me mad just one more time, he's out of the will. <laughs> So I, I might have this up at that option. Yeah, as, as you've all heard, I have a very close-knit family, but it only takes one more time and I'm out of the will. <laughs> well, uh, folks, I hope y'all appreciated this. Uh, I, I just thought, you know, because I've seen other shop tours and I thought it'd be neat to show off my dad's. Uh, sadly, it doesn't get used as often as he would like because of the limitations of growing older and you know habits of growing up and this and that's most i go into there but we did get the important stuff in like the guard dogs and the bear and the piss tube there is a set of uh aluminum cased encased uh stanley tools such as planers sanders saws etc oh and that in that, that, that trunk over there the, in that trunk yeah that were my granddad's and he was a commercial contractor for a while and believe me they all work just fine yeah and i, w I wish we had uh pre i wish i had pre-planned enough that we could have had that thing emptied out but there's a lot of hand tools in there that are original and still work fine because they were taken care of runs in the family until you get to me and you look at my scroll saw table that was all divided up that's a heater what can i say i don't know but there's, there's your uh, backup for when the fridge is empty. Anyway, folks, I really, really hope y'all appreciated uh, this little tour. But yes, he, he does actually own a scroll saw, but I don't think he's touched it in years. <laughs> but I uh, appreciate y'all watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.